Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Art Directors Guild nominee Mark Scruton. Production designer on Netflix is Wednesday. Mark, this series really blew expectations out of the water. One of the biggest shows to ever hit Netflix. What has it been like to be part of this sort of phenomenon? Uh, that's an interesting question, actually. Um, yes, I mean, we didn't quite expect it to be as big as, as it has become, which, which is just fantastic. And I think seeing the way everyone's sort of taking what we did and, and turned it into this sort of, I don't know, iconic sort of world is is fascinating. I've never quite had my designs taken to so many people's hearts as much as has happened on this. You know, it's it's extraordinary seeing the the stained glass window particularly turned into sort of earrings and t-shirts and people, you know, things for people to hang in their windows at home. And just just that on its own is extraordinary. So yes, it's um it's great. You know, it's really, really fun. And talk about getting into this project with Tim Burton, because he has this identifiable style to his work. I mean, he has for decades. So what were your initial talks with him? And then how do you get your style or or your interpretation of, of that vision with of what he has, as well as the creators of the show? So, yes, I mean, it was it was a tricky one for me initially because yeah you're right you get that brief and you get the script and it landed on a Sunday morning and it was like you're meeting Tim you know in six hours time and I was like oh, okay great and and there was a bit of me well it's quite a lot of me that was that had to really pull myself up and say you can't um you can't dwell on on trying to to be you know dig into Tim's style you have to try and put your point of view across and you have to explain what you your thoughts are see what the feedback is and then take it from there. And I think that's how we started. You know, I, we had a brief Zoom call, then I went round to his house and we sat down and just discussed the show in, in broad strokes. And I then just went away and drew some some sketches and and thought, well, you know, they're, he's either going to hate them and that'll be under this relationship or or we can move forward. And and luckily he liked them and and, you know, he saw what I was trying to do with it. And, you know, I wasn't deliberately leaning into his style but the script and the show itself already had that vibe to it anyway so you weren't going to go too far wrong in you know exploring that world with him and it was great and and he liked what I was doing and we we moved forward and the showrunners miles an hour were really you know into what we were doing as well so it, it very quickly gelled as a as a creative partnership which was which was a relief on my part as much as anything else and Nevermore Academy is, of course, the main set. So how did you come up with the main set design for this and work with visual effects to combine your work with theirs? Because I understand there was some collaboration there. Yeah, no, it was, we looked at lots and lots and lots of castle locations and some of which you could have shot as is, you know, there were huge sprawling sort of Gothic towers and spires. I know kind of alluring for a show like ours, you're like, you know, this is great. There's lots of value in it, but actually, and this is, this is where you had to understand actually what Tim's aesthetic really is. They were, they were too much and they, they actually didn't really help us. And, and we then went to look at Canter Casino, which is a place we ended up using. And what he saw in it was a sparseness and a, a quality that actually, when you looked at it and you, you could see beyond the, the basic chassis of the building, you're like, yeah, actually, yes, this is, He's, he's absolutely right. This is what we should be looking at. And what was great about Canter Casino was it had this sort of central, very strong turret, which had that sort of nod to the Adams family house. And they had a lot of sprawling campus buildings, which, which didn't really go much past one or two stories. So we had the basis and then we could go away and design our own building on top of it. So you could chain the roof lines, you could extend up, you could expand um, without fighting what was already there because th there was a lot of, fresh air around it to explain it another way so so we then took sort of the key aspects of that building and we went away and drew literally with a marker pen trying to get the perfect silhouette that would evoke the Adams family sort of look getting the roof lines right getting that sweep and the curve and the turrets and everything else so you get one composition and once we had that we were like well yes this works as a building so and this is what this is going to work for us and Tim was really into it and then we developed it a lot you know, and then you build models and you extend it and you you really you could then build back um with the help of 3d modeling we could really expand that building and then when we shot it we dressed the first floor of the canter casino and then everything else became a cg takeover um 
which sounds like a very long-winded exercise but actually for us it was great because it really gave us the creative freedom to to have the, the building we wanted and you've worked on quite a few projects that were heavy in visual effects like gravity some star wars films how does that affect your work as a production design designer it's interesting sometimes it's it's very freeing because you get you know the chance to design stuff that you want it to be but then there's always that risk that it once you finish shooting it sort of leaves your hands and and you know then suddenly that design aspect is out of your out of your control and suddenly you see things happen to it which maybe weren't what you originally planned on this show that didn't happen it, you know never more turned out exactly as we all we all sat down and designed and you know it, it came out really well but it's it's a it can be a double-edged sword i think working with heavy cg um films and and there's always a temptation i think to over design as well when you're working in that world and, and it's you know we're all guilty of it you know you get given a, a blank piece of paper and a pencil and say draw what you want and you end up it's going to be huge and it's going to be massive and and we we were try to be quite restrained on this and i think that's that comes from tim as well he's not one to over cook things you know actually his aesthetic is very minimal in many ways and i think that comes across in this more than a lot of stuff you know the temptation to go large and everything is always there but actually we normally brought it back down to more human scale um to try and keep the show you know human even though it's not you know it's dealing with lots of um, non-human aspects we all wanted to feel like a real world with real people with real issues and you know storylines so and a lot of the story takes place in Wednesday's dorm room um and you have those dual personalities living in there with her yes. and, and Enid so we've got Wednesday's black and white side and then the very colorful um side over here and it all is centered around that stained glass window which you mentioned earlier which uh talk about coming up with that design and then working on each side of those rooms so that was that was kind of the first thing I tackled. You know, it was, the, it was when you read the scripts, it was always the center point of the show, and you could you could see how it needed to be the linchpin for everything else. And so, you know, it always said there was this big window that dominated the room, you know, which is a great steer when you're trying to design something like a dorm, which is inherently a hard thing to do because they're quite dull spaces normally. Um, we you know we'd put Enid up in the top tower on her own and came up with a backstory to explain why they had more space than some of the other people at the academy um but the more we drew it the, you know the more i drew it the more you you realize that it was it had to be this this sort of split and it describes the scene where they she puts them up the gaffer tape down the middle and i was like well that that then has to go up through the window and then the window has to be split. you know and it, it almost became so blindingly obvious that 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 was you know there was no going back from that point um and, you know, I wanted that space because we went there so often, I wanted it to be somewhere that you could visit and, and create different scenes within it. So you've got the big space in the middle with the window, which was, you know, the graphic center point, but then you had smaller spaces and more cloistered spaces where you could build more intimate scenes if you wanted to, or then you could, you know, come wide and, and have much bigger, more elaborate scenes in there. So you never quite get bored of it. Um, Anyway, and originally I wanted the whole window to be stained glass and sort of Wednesday drained it by magic. And then I was, you know, informed that nobody was magic in that room and it had to happen some other way. So we came up with this device of of Enid, you know, with the with the gels and she's done it herself. And then there's the great moment where Wednesday comes back and has hacks it all off with a very sharp, nasty, you know, aggressive weapon, which is another reinforcement of the whole relationship. So it worked out really well as a as a device on lots of levels. And people love that. I mean, you've talked about earrings and there's like merch lines out on that. I feel like Wednesday's been such a huge show that everyone's sort of having their moment, even behind the scenes, like this is yours. We have the Goo Goo Muck song from, from the music supervisors. <laughs> I mean, it's really incredible what sort of reach and uh, this show has done not just for Jenna Ortega, but I mean, all of your stuff is really being highlighted in such a great way. Yeah, no, it's it's extraordinary. I never really, you know, you always hope these things will, <laughs> will get into the, you know, into the public domain. But you know, I never quite imagined that it would hit home so so well. And it's it's great. It's you know, it's very flattering and, and just just lovely to see it out there. You know, someone sent me on Instagram the other day that had a tattoo of the window down on their arm here with a sort of oh. amazing graphic. And he's like, wow, <laughs> that's really quite something to know. You've you've people have you know, got on board with it like that. It's extraordinary. 
One of my favorite spaces is actually Principal Ween's office. Um, she's got sort of this combination of goth and modern. Mm -hmm. Talk about the inspiration for her office and what you wanted to that space to say about her. So, so that was yeah, that was an interesting one because we 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 ended up building that in a location, even though we were going to build it. But then we found this great space, which was kind of what we wanted, but better. Um, but we'd always had this the big Gorgon fireplace as part of the design. And so we built that into the location. So it was sort of sculpted into the wall and we built it into a, an opening that already existed. Um, but it always wanted, we always kind of kind of want to give her a more eclectic feel. And I think um, it worked really well for us to, to start with the sort of crazy Rococo, extraordinary space that we had and then go into it. We put in sort of modernist furniture and, you know, brutalist lighting and, and sculptures and all sorts of stuff. Cause you really wanted to, to give her the feel that she wasn't just one thing. She sort of epitomized the different elements of the school. So there was, you know, more Gothic elements, more modern elements, more, you know, brutal elements and, and, and try and make it a melting pot, which, which, you know, subtly or otherwise, you know, would, would show her character more. And, and Gwendolyn, Christy um, actually came up to us before we shot it and said, oh, I'd really like a little bit of brutalist sculpture in there. And we were like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> funny you should say that because <laughs> we've already got quite a bit in there. Um, but she showed us a picture of, a, of an owl she has at home, this sort of brutalist owl. And, and we couldn't actually, un unfortunately, get that cleared um, to use. But we, we did our own sort of brutalist owl sculpture for her, which sort of sits on a little table behind her and then brought other bits and pieces into play. So it was, it was a really nice melting pot i think that set for us and then the city of jericho you had to completely build that correct and the, yes. was that always the plan how did that evolve for you and not initially no so we were, we were going to go to toronto and, and film it there and you know small sort of new england-esque towns were, were quite easy to find um and we'd looked at hundred nearly hundreds of them actually we'd looked at a lot um and they all looked the part, but they didn't really quite work for us geographically. There was always something that didn't quite hit the mark, you know, and, and Tim loves symmetry and things to work and, you know, everything has to be kind of where it needs to be. Um, so we were struggling a little bit and then we pivoted to Romania. And then of course, there's no American towns in Romania or anything remotely like that. So it, it very quickly became clear that that's what we had to do. We had to build it, which was great because then you sit down with a script and a piece of paper and you say, well, pinbox office has to be here and the weather vane has to be here and she has to be able to go from here to here to here and then you have a chassis and then you build up from there and you could you know explore all the design aspects exactly where you wanted to be and and how you wanted them to look and you could dig into that notion of of um, contrast and opposites which is what we started with the dormitory you know with the hard black and white color mm -hmm. aesthetic and then we could take it further so jericho then becomes very bright about it colorful and jericho is dark and black and white and monochrome and and sort of expand that contrast out to the two towns which was a great thing to be able to do from the ground up um and we really did go to the to the sort of the rooftops and the top of the church and everything else because we tried on that set particularly because we went there so often we didn't really want to have to top it up with cg every time so it was pretty much all in camera um apart from a couple of aerial shots where they had to sort of paint out the unit base and stuff like that what sort of team do you have to assemble for this i mean it sounds like an incredible amount of work to pull off it, it was and i'll be honest when we moved to romania i wasn't entirely sure what i was getting into because i'd not worked in romania before and you know you, like any country that you're un unsure about you don't quite know there was a lot sitting on my shoulders that i had to pull off um but i you know actually we pulled together an amazing team in my art department and then you know the construction departments really excelled we found some extraordinary sculptures there that really did some amazing work you know in the end we had hundreds of people working on that show in in all the trades some of the trades we had to revive from scratch you know they didn't have a plaster department at all when we went out there it's pretty much fallen away so we had to go out and find the people that had moved on to other trades and bring them back together and, and form a you know a plaster team um but everyone was so into the show you know we, we've had people coming out of the woodwork all over the place some extraordinary talents that we found just because people wanted to work with us and work work on with tim and um in the end you know i couldn't have asked for a better team i think in the end we, there's some really extraordinary people in there what are some of your favorite design elements 
that aren't obvious? Like what are some things that are more subtle that we haven't talked about that are some of your favorite things that people, if they watch again, could take notice of? It's in, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, sometimes there's so many things we did. I sometimes even forgot complete sets because there's so many of them. I think, you know, we we tried a lot to get details in. So for instance, we had this little ship motif, which was meant to be the ship that Joseph Crackstone comes on from, to, you know, when he gets to Jericho, to Van Jericho, he's supposed to arrive in the ship, which is kind of a backstory, I think, that that eluded most people. But we built the ship motif into all sorts of things, even into the wallpaper in Tyler's bedroom, um, which we had made up with this ship sort of into it. And, and it's all over the place if you look for it, um, which was kind of pleasing. And also the gargoyles, I think, in the quad were all designed to look like different members of of the academy so there's vampires and gorgons and you know and then we hit a, a hide monster up there as well um which was kind of stressful because the actual design for the hide didn't come to the very last minute so <laughs> we had this this one gap of where the gargoyle was supposed to go and we had no design for it and then suddenly the design hit and we we're like right this is this is the design and then we had to suddenly have the sculptors rustle up this this hide monster which snuck snuck up into their this little hiding space. I think you can see it briefly on a couple of occasions, but unless you were looking for it, you'd never know it was there. But um, well, that was nice to have those things in amongst, we sort of woven into the architecture. It's an interesting business, production design. Uh, I'm curious, what brought you into this business? Were you like a theater techie in high school or were you into architecture? I've heard a lot of different stories and I'm, I, I'm always curious what brings people into what they're doing in Hollywood. I, I always just like I mean, I've always since I was like five, I think, wanted to just build things and and environments. And you know, I grew up watching sort of fifties B movies and and that kind of stuff. And you know, I as a kid before I even went to school, I'd watch watch them on on the in the afternoons, and then go away and build little models or you know expand on what I've been watching. And it, and it's always been, I think, where I wanted to do. Um, no matter where I've ended up you know, education wise or otherwise, it's always what I've come back to. <laughs> so when I left school, that's what I went and studied. And, and it's it's just been my my one passion, you know, constantly throughout everything else. Even when I've thought that can't possibly be what I'm going to do for a living, it's ended up what I do do for a living. So yes, that desire to create worlds, I think, is, um, has always been my pull. And we know season two is coming now. So um, when can we, what can we expect from that? Or have you gotten started on it or have any plans started developing yet? I, I mean, I believe there's stuff going on. I, I must admit I'm not, I'm, I'm on another show at the moment. So, um, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but there's definitely, obviously, you know, it's been such a success that the desire to, to get it going is, is massive, but, um, but I'm not au fait with all the details I have to admit at the moment. All right. Well, we look forward to the next season. Mark, congratulations on your incredible work on Wednesday and best of luck to you and the entire cast and crew at the upcoming Emmys. Thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thanks very much indeed for having me.